There we go. Oh, right, here we go. This is where it got, got just got instantly interesting. Have you ever wondered what's inside a ball like this? This is a ceramic heat emitter. In this video, we're going to find out, and we've got some tools to help us along the way. So for those of you that are new to this channel, my name's Richard. This is called Northern Exotics. On this channel, we talk all things reptile related, whether it be specific species care, breed your own live food, loads of little reptile hacks, and we bring you all of the most up-to-date information and knowledge. If this is something you're interested in, why not consider subscribing? I'd really appreciate it. But like I've said in this video, we're gonna be taking apart this ceramic heat emitter. Now, for those who don't know what this actually is, this is a bulb for basically a nocturnal species and it just gives off heat, no light whatsoever, just heat. It's called a ceramic heat emitter and it's made of ceramic. So I wonder, I guess that's where it come from. Anyway, I've recently got this out of Popcorn's enclosure, just up there. He's our big Carl Sunglide Boa Constrictor. Basically because we're rejuvenating the majority of the lighting and heating supplements for all of our animals here. Uh, everything's getting updated, you can see there. That's our Savannah Monitor's lighting. His lights are off, it's night time, you ain't gonna see it. But for Popcorn up there, he's just had a massive upgrade into the infrared heat projector by Mega Ray. This is sold by Reptile Systems. Absolutely amazing piece of kit. I might talk more about this throughout this video, but like I've said, let's get to taking this apart. Here we are then. This, like I've said, this has recently come out of a fairly high humidity enclosure for my boa constrictor. This is, so, I mean, all this white stuff that you can see all kicking around in there, that could quite easily just be corrosion from the humidity. I have no idea, but it's falling out as I'm messing around with it. So bear, with, bear in mind that that could be a possibility. Now this here is a cheap Chinese knockoff. It was just a cheap one. I didn't really have too much information on it. The problem is, or the thing that I like, you can probably see it around about here. There is a CE mark on it, which is what it is. But yeah, I don't recommend buying these cheap Chinese knockoffs. If you're buying them off eBay and they're like Fiverr, not really worth it. Don't bother because they just break easy, as you can tell with the lip and the hole just there. It's not been in that long and that's what's happened. I'd fully recommend going for something that has been tried and tested thoroughly. Something along the lines of uh, the Reptile Systems ones. I mean, just look at the shape difference for that matter, just on its own. That has had super amount of testing done to it. And look, that's just amazing. What's that? 10,000 hour long lifespan. And I can honestly say I've had mine in for around about that with one of my other boa constrictors. And it works absolutely perfect. And I've not had a problem with it. But like I've said, cheap Chinese knockoff. Let's see what's inside. So I'm just going to try, first of all, to try and crack the seal if there is a seal because i have no idea how these are actually put together i have no idea what's inside i'm basically just oh it's twisting a bit just having a look to see if i can do it with my hands i mean if it doesn't work with my hands i've got various tools that can be used but if i can do it gently with my hands so that you guys can see even better and i'm just gonna go all this white stuff here is all falling out quite easily so that could just be oh 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 it could be corrosion it could be part of the bulb i have no idea until we get it out but what i'm hoping is that all of this here is just like a shell with this funky pattern here so if it's just a shell there might be something inside it we don't know i mean how there could be gas inside here and you could actually watch me die in the next minute or so depending on how long it takes to get this out so i'm just cracking the seal and loads of the white powder is still falling out. But if I can get it all off in one go, then we can... Oh, there we go. Loads more white powder just fell out. You can hear it shaking. So um, I don't know what that is. Because this bulb did work when I took it out. I bought loads of these when I first got them. And... Oh, oh, oh. You can see all this white stuff here. I'm actually thinking that's part of the actual bulb. And it's just been burnt a little bit. But it's a bit looser. Oh, it's still not coming out, but it's really, really loose. I wonder if I can unscrew it off. Oh, that sound is horrible. No, that's not screwing off. But it's gone really wonky. Look at that now. 
Can you see that white bit a bit clearer now? Right. Come on then. Let's go. Oh. Oh. Right, right, right. You can see it's it's come away all the way round now. Something's attaching it because it's just stuck on something. But I don't want to break what's inside it because I actually want to see. Oh, oh. Oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, right, there we go. Right, so that's the E27 fitting. Obviously, in America, you get the E26, which is a little bit smaller than that. But you can see inside, if I can get a good angle for you, how dirty and corroded it is inside. Mainly, right down this bottom corner. You see all that corrosion? See if I can get it a bit better for you on an angle. Nope, that's probably the best you're going to get. Let's see if I can get it up. See all the corrosion down that bottom corner? That's absolutely insane. But right, so in here, right down in the middle at the bottom, there's a tiny little hole, which I'm, I'm assuming leads to that. Then I'm assuming that leads to, see that wire that's sticking up out there? And then that wire there attaches to the metal ring on the outside because obviously it goes over the top. That touches that. That touches the inside. That's that sorted. Right, so all that white was actually part of the actual bulb. But look at all this glue sort of stuff that they used to attach it. Now, what I find fascinating with that is it only goes so far around. And then it starts there and then goes. Now, I don't know if that's to actually make that piece there a bit of a metal conductor. I have no idea. But then what's the black? Because it's all the same. It's just like a coating. I have no idea, but look, there we go. Right, let's have a look and see if we can get all this sort of stuff that's inside out. Because I don't know what it is. Could it just be that it heats up the actual outside ceramicness, or is there an element inside it? Because I just assumed that there was an element inside. But that's firmly in place. And that's firmly in place. So what we're going to do here is, will it break quite easily? Because if it'll break, then I can... Oh, oh, right, that piece broke off quite easily. See if it'll do it again. If it'll do it again. Oh, there we go, there we go. Right, if I can get right into the gubbins of it, then we can really see what's happening here and how it actually works. This is fascinating. I, I really don't know if you guys find this fascinating at all, but I really do, because I've always wanted to know. Now, these guys, the CHEs, the ceramic heat emitters, they're becoming a little bit of a thing of the past, so to speak. And let me explain why. These only really give off an uh, infrared C. Let me explain. You've got the UVI scale. I think it's in nanometers. Don't, don't quote me on that. Anyway, you've got your visible light in the middle. In front of it, you've got your ultraviolet light. Before that, you've got the light that isn't of this earth. So your stuff like your gamma rays and your X-rays, the man-made lights. You've got your visible light in the middle. Well, after that is the invisible light. That's infrared. That, that you need to know that sort of thing to sort of follow along with this. The infrared is just the infrared. So after the visible light, you've got your infrared. That's split into three categories. So you've got your infrared A, infrared B, infrared C. The infrared A through into the first part of B is the infrared light, the heat, that really penetrates into your animal, into its deep tissue. These only really give off a tiny little bit of infrared one, all the way through, into the majority being C. Infrared C is just heat. You know that sort of heat you get where it doesn't quite heat you up inside? It's like those little fan heaters that you get, and it just blows hot air at your face, and it doesn't really do much. But that's a basically what the equivalent of one of these is that they are becoming a thing of the past and but there is other things becoming much more available nowadays stuff like these these are your infrared heat projectors now these really do power out the uh, the infrared a and b this really does get into the deep tissue of your animals but then they do pretty much the same thing they just give off heat you will get a little bit of a glow, heat glow from the elements in the actual middle of the fitting, light, ball, whatever you call it. You will get a tiniest little bit of light. It's not the end of the world. 
It's perfect. It really does help your animal get really into the deep tissue, which is exactly what we want. It gives them a nice, comfortable heat, just like if you were out in Spain. And Right, that's not working like that because I've already got that corner piece off. So let's try and go in that way. Oh, this is harder than it. Oh, I was about to say it's quite a hard material and then it just cracked open massively. So it just seems to be sort of glued in the bottom. So I'm starting to get a good picture, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'll keep going. But what, from what I think is, they've poured a material inside it and that has hardened. They've put the cables into it. When the electric goes onto that material, it separates it around all this pattern that little bit more efficiently. Right. Right, 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 here we go. Let's see if I can get this corner piece off with the pliers and we'll have a good look. Oh, there we go. If there is a product you want to know what's inside of it, just stick it in the comments down below and I'll, I'll gladly have a little play. I mean, we've got loads of stuff to go with. And plus, I've got some really good contacts within Reptile Systems that would know the answer to various questions that you might have. Right, right, here we go. Oh. It's really starting to crumble apart now, I mean, that's all that's left so far. So, we're getting there, we're getting somewhere, guys. Hopefully now, I'll be able to get a decent bit of footage of what's actually inside. Maybe I'll take apart a bit more. We shall see. I wonder if the hammer will work, because I've got the claw on the end. Ha, ah, you guys moaned about me doing unboxing videos with a knife. They've let me loose with a hammer. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Can you see what's inside now? Just that material. Now I've got a big crack just there, so there we go. Oh, right, here we go. This is where it got, got just got instantly interesting. So we've got that material stuff just in the bottom there. Within that material, we have got, let me get a screwdriver to point it out. This hole here, this hole here, this hole here, and this one here, they coincide with the actual pattern that's on the bulb. As you can tell, we've got the holes there and there, and that's the ridge just there. So they've got metal within them. So I'm assuming now that has just opened up everything, and you can see that one just there. So the power comes in on this one, into this material, which I think could just be ceramic, onto this metal spring, and it just goes through the actual coil part of the bottom of the bulb, as you can tell with here, here, and you can see it all over the place there. Because look, it's actually secured by the wire. That's fascinating. So the heat dissip dissipates from here, here, through the bottom. So that's why you get some bulbs that look like this with the shaped up right, and bulbs like this where all the power can just go straight down and into it. So how can the quality improve on these? Well, bigger springs, more surface area to heat, um, more airflow, I have no idea. But that is just fascinating. Let me know in the comment section if you guys found it as fascinating as me. But let's break it. Whoa. So that right there is what's inside a ceramic heat emitter heat bulb. 